I was not impressed by your performance. This week, we have the return of George St. Pierre, but it's also the return of, obviously, Fight Talk. Welcome along to episode 87. I am Noel O'Keefe, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Robert Pallon. How are you, Mr. Noel O'Keefe? I'm top of the world, looking down top on creation. Top of the morning. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Fight Star Ireland, the fighter's choice, everything you need under two rules. Check them out. And tell them we sent you. MMAMix.com. They're obviously good. Because they're with, obviously, Fight Talk. And www.feelsupreme.co.uk. Big shout out to them guys as well. Go and check them out. And when you buy your products, all your natural supplements, all your recovery aid as a, an athlete, at a fighter, or just a normal Joe Soap. When you're checking out, use the code Fight Talk. 10% off. Happy days. Long as you want. Bama, just around the corner. Bama 32, just around the corner. And this week, we are going to be joined by two of the fighters on the card. We're going to be joined by David Calzat, making his second appearance on, obviously, Fight Talk, who takes on the returning, don't call it a comeback, it's the reborn of Dylan, the nuke, Took. We'll be speaking with both fighters. Um, I've said we recorded the interviews a little earlier and um, two great interviews and I have to say Dylan Took is a really open and honest and yeah. excellent interview um, it's a great fight it's going down on November 10th in the 3 arena we're also going to be looking ahead to uh, the must watch MMA fights of November it's something we started um, last month um, and the reason it's evolved in the show this week is we went big on our UFC breakdown yeah. uh, for this week. So we're putting that out separate. So yeah. straight away, if you're listening now, expecting UFC 217 breakdown, it's not going to be on this show. It's going to be on another video. But listen to these interviews. They are worth listening to. David Calza, Dylan Took, two great interviews. And then, of course, the fights. We gave our top five list of the fights in November. There's rules that come with them, Robert. Rules. You're only everybody allowed, loves rules. Yeah, yeah, everybody loves them. You're only allowed to pick two fights from the one card. Otherwise, we would have just said, yeah, watch UFC 217. Peace. Pretty much, The yeah. shortest video we'll have ever made. Um, and on MMA Must Watch Fights, we're going to have Brendan Dorman involved. But Brendan's purely in the dark. He doesn't yeah. know the list we've combined. So he's given Gosh. us the big Caesar thumb up or thumb down if he agrees. Uh, this is 87. Let's dive into it and let's get David Kalsa on the blower. So welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. If you're watching on YouTube, you may recognize the familiar face. And if you're listening on audio, you're about to find out. We are joined competing at Bama 32 in Dublin's 3 Arena on the 10th of November. Welcome back to Obviously Fight Talk. David Kelsa. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me again. And David, the last time we spoke to you on the show, you were about to make your promotional debut with Bama, but also your professional debut as well. And you were taking on another SPG fighter in Keen Cowley. And that fight went the way you wanted it. Um, you got to submission choke after two minutes and 40 seconds of round number one. That didn't stop you, though. You, you were straight back into action later on then. The fight with Keen was back in May. And in September, you then stepped in and got a split decision over Charlie Howard. So you've been pretty active in your first since your debut, you've been active in your schedule to fight again on the 10th of November. Was that the idea once you turned pro, was to, to not waste any time? Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm turning 30 on, uh, on the 10th of November, actually, on the, fight, on the night of the fight in Dublin. So, oh. um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm 30 years of age, you know. I'm literally, I'm just turning 30. I've got to get, I've got to hit, hit the ground running, got to build on the success from the, uh, obviously, the Kean fight. And then Charlie Boy Howard fight, which was, a completely different fight, but again, um, a good learning experience for me. I learned a lot from that fight as well. And yeah, and then they offered me, um, they offered me Dylan Took, and I was like, yeah, let's uh, let's do that one as well. And it gives me a chance to uh, to get over, obviously, get over and fight in Dublin, which seems to be the place to be fighting at the moment. You know, um, uh, the Dublin uh, Irish fans are actually mad for it. They love it, the atmosphere, and yeah, I can't, uh, I, can't I can't wait to get over there and uh, show them what I can do. You know. The career so far, you, you're not really doing a small. You, you started in Bama, you're doing the big shows already. How has that worked out for you? And um, I, obviously, when we talked at the, the the last interview, you said that you didn't expect it to happen so quick. But so now it's three fights in, and you're three big shows with Bama. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it got a bit mad. It's it's just been it's a bit mad. But I mean, like I said, if you like I said in the first interview, I uh, I was taking the opportunity and grasping it with both hands. And uh, yeah, I mean, they, if they keep offering me the fights, I'm going to keep going and fighting. I mean, I've been lucky, really, been able to get them. They've got me onto the shows that they've got me on. 
And yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm just I'm loving it. You know, it's uh, I'm living I'm living my dreams at the moment. So it's just gonna keep working hard, keep keep getting the wins, and yeah, keep putting trying to put on exciting fights. You know. So what happens is when people fight as well, every when you get when the video and footage is out there of your fight, and people will will certainly comment on that. So let's talk about the King Kelly fight first of all. Um, you started off the you were trading. Keen landed a couple of low leg shots on you, and I think you actually said after the fight as well. You didn't think you were going to have to take too many more of them, um, but you got the takedown yeah. um, and you had a beautiful transition to to get the back and get the choke. But just talking about the King Kelly directly, was that a case where the leg kicks were a, a great concern during that fight? Yeah, I mean it's, it's unfortunate that anyone, that no one's been able to that, that the um, the video sort of disappeared. I don't know what happened, but I have a technical issue with it, and no one's been able to see it. So, but um. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I mean, at the start of that fight, I, don't, I actually caught him you know, with a jab, but it wasn't very, it wasn't a hard jab, but I think that was enough for him to realise, look, okay, I didn't, he, maybe he didn't think I was going to be able to land any sort of shots on him because of the range, and I think that made him take a step back and then try and work the kicks, and then obviously him working the kicks then forced me to think, well, look, I, I, I couldn't take any more of them leg kicks, they, they were hard, and he was like... It was so fast on his feet the way he was boom, boom, boom. He was like all over the shop when he kicks. He was out and then he's kicking and he was out again. And I was thought, I got to grab hold of this lad and get him to the canvas, you know. And um, it, his um, his his tie boxing pedigree show, put it that way, you know. Obviously, the speed, the speed of the kicks, the power of the kicks, it, it was there, and it was an, it was enough to put me off and think, yeah, forget this, it's going to the ground. And that was something we actually spoke about when you were on with us last time. Yeah. You said, is it going to be? Is yeah. the game plan that obvious that you're fighting a tie guy, take him down and choke him out? <laughs> and you sort of said, no, it's not that simple, or it's not that easy on the game plan. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah. it, how, I mean, how, how it seemed to go. Them, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I did, I did, I would like to stand, but I mean, he, obviously, like I said, he took them kicks and that, I'm, if I see a disadvantage, if you see a disadvantage, you're going to take it, but I did what I would have liked to stand and to do a little bit more training, but man, I mean, I actually picked up some injuries in training on that leg, uh, training with some Thai guys, getting ready for Kian, and a the, the couple, the couple of kicks he landed was just like, oh God, here we go again, like, so I thought, I thought, nah, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, I wanted to win, like I said, I would do anything to win that fight, and I went, I went not there just to take part, I went there to win, so, so I, I yeah, was, if that's going to be the way to win, I, mean, I was expecting a bit more resistance on the ground from him, to be honest, if I'm not, if, if I'm not, uh, if if um, if he had to be hundred percent, I was expecting a, bit, a little bit more, but that's the way it goes, you know. Well, I certainly think both fight as in you're coming, you know, you've the the big amateur background as well in MMA, and Keen obviously coming from the toy into MMA to transition, so there was obviously going to be stronger sections for you, and then stronger sections for Keen yeah. in, in certain areas. So again, as a mixed martial yeah. artist, you took the fight to where you were the shark, and congratulations on a great victory. Your second bout, we were talking about the Keen fight has disappeared. Your second bout was in the dark. Um, online when we were watching it it wasn't actually previewed uh, at the time so i was on twitter following mma lettuce and uh, darren russell was yeah, too, constantly yeah, yeah. tweeting that's how i was following your fight went to a split decision yeah. so was going to three rounds a good advantage for you as well as in to get some uh, cage time in there as well yeah i mean the when I, well, the key and fight i literally i did I didn't go into the, I didn't even step foot in the Bama cage before I fought in it. The first time I stepped in it was when the fight was on because for some reason we weren't allowed in the cage. Uh, I think it was running a bit tight on the schedule. But um, yeah, I mean, I managed to get a couple of five five minutes in the cage before the Charlie Howard or Howard fight before it started. And then uh, yeah, he took a long time to come out, so I was just walking on the cage enjoying it. And the more you more the more I'm in there, the more relaxed I'm getting in there, you know. Um, but yeah, the three five minute rounds were. It was a good good experience for me to know that I can go three five in the rounds. And as far as the performance, watching it back, I could have stepped the pace. I should have stepped the pace up a bit more. Really, I was a, a little bit too uh, patient with it and sitting back a little bit too long. And maybe I'm just thinking, looking at battle now, I should have been pulling under a lot more pressure. You know, when the announcer said split, were you ex- were you confident that it was yours? Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was a split decision, to be fair myself. I mean, he was throwing single shots and I was throwing combinations, so I don't really, I mean, he, he landed the odd little, quite a few leg kicks, but it was like, um, yeah, I I'd, 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 I'd thought I'd pretty much won every round at the time. Looking back at it now, I'd say I won the first and the third comfortably in the second, so I was still looking at it, I wouldn't, wouldn't think it was a split decision, but that's judging for you, isn't it? Um, moving on to your your opponent in Dublin here now, Dylan Took. Um, what do you know of Dylan yourself? Have you watched back footage, or, or what do you know of the young fighter? 
Yeah, you know, with um, same as you do any fight. You look, I mean, I don't obsess over fighters. I'm not, mm. I'm not that. I told you that last time. I'm not that. I'm not that fighter that does that and obsesses over people. I've, I've got coaches, good coaches around me. My twin brother, he analyzes fights and have a look, has a look and tell us where we need to be working, what we need to be doing. And yeah, you know, he, um, he's got some. He's obviously got real good skills. He's not. He, he's not. It's not going to be another. It's not, and again, it's not going to be another easy. It's not going to be an easy fight. Same as the last two. It's going to be. He's going to become. He's going to bring it and. Yeah, he's got he's got a lot of skills, but I mean he's good, but he's not perfect. So yeah, we can uh, expose some, seen some weaknesses that we're going to ex- uh, exploit. Yeah, he's coming off a knockout loss in his last fight against Cameron Else. Do you think that'll affect him much? Um, I think more the time off than the actual um, than the actual knockout. But um, I think every, you get knocked out, you try you pick yourself up and come back. I think having the time off out of the cage might be a factor, but. You can't, you can't really say that he's young enough that and hungry enough that it probably it might not be a factor at all. But you, you can't expect it to be a factor. You just feel like going and expecting he's going to be at his best, you know. Will that be something at a game plan as well? Because if you look at the fight with Cameron Else, it was a it happened quick. It happened in the first. I think it was something twenty five yeah, really seconds. Early, or so. yeah. It was a very fast. Was really is that something that you what maybe want to do? Is maybe play on if there is any jitters in there by Dylan Took? You want to set on him and get an early pace on him early. Um, yeah, I think it would be the same as any other fight, really. Uh, it's just going to be the same. And I think there's always going to be... Uh, the, the might, well, there might be a feeling out process. The might, it's going to all depend on how he comes in and how he comes at me, you know. If he comes flying at me, I can fly him back at him. If he sits back and we'll play the real... We'll play the back and forth game, whatever. It's like you like I said last time. You judge your fight. You can never say what's exactly going to happen in a fight. You judge it at the when you prepare and you train for it. But then, at the time, you think, oh, this is going to happen. Something else happens. So I'll, I'll play it by ear. You know, we have the game plan, but it's always subject to change. Uh, SPG you really respected camp here in Ireland and in the world at the moment um, and you fought King Cowley who was a big prospect coming out there and now Dylan too because was one of the biggest prospects um, over the last few years do you look at that and do you think that's a, a big opportunity for you or do you relish that kind of thing um, I think I think it's, it's got to be really I mean I've got you've got to take it everything is a positive I mean I could be lure fighting lads which are, which haven't really got any background and they haven't, they're just like they're, they've had a good, say, a good a good amateur career they've got a deep come from a good gym but they're not super well known whereas fighting the, the people that are fighting with the, the followings that they've got and then it's like it, it can only elevate me it can only help me in my quest to, uh, to, to climb up the rankings you know um, Dylan Took done an interview, um, I think it was last week, with MMAinsiders.com. And to quote, yeah, looking back at your last fight, this is a direct quote from Dylan. He was good for about two minutes of the fight, but to be honest, he was gasping for air for the rest of it. At the end of the day, he's going to be just another Jav. Jav is J-A-V, and it stands for just another victim. What do you think of that? Yeah, I was... Yeah, obviously, right? it's makes no difference to me. Like you say, he can say what he wants, say what he wants, whatever. And I, I, ain't like, I ain't going to start slating him. It's one of them. I don't know the lad. I don't know him from Adam. It's, yeah, he, he can, the more confident he is, the worse it's going to be for him. So it doesn't really make any difference to me. The fight's a fight. And on the 10th of November, I'm going 3-0 and, and turning 3-0, and you know? Um, again, just to bring it to, into the Dublin side of things, you're saying you, you're looking forward to fighting here on, uh, on Dublin soil in the three yeah. arena. Um, is, is the plan with Bama to stay as active? Um, I, I, I know Bama will have plans to be back in Birmingham again as well soon, but is it a matter of you come through this fight injury-free, you're basically getting on to Jude Samuel saying, yep, yeah, get me ready for the next card? Definitely, yeah. I'm, um, yeah. I mean, I'm. Once I finish this fight, I'm looking around at the looking around the featherweight division and thinking, where do I go next? You know. So I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm working towards that. I want that title. I want, want that title shot now. You know. I want to be get that get get it get get the shot and get get the strap. You know. I mean, it's never really been a big thing for me getting to bouts, but I mean, you get bouts, you get known, and then that's. That's where he start making the big bucks, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm not sure what your contract looks like, but is it an exclusive contract with Obama? Uh, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is. A, it, is a, it was a. It's a. It's a fight, exclusive five fight contract. Yeah. Does uh, promotions like uh, KSW, who was just in Ireland uh, recently, and there was a lot of guys who fought from uh, Bama's roster with KSW? Did you see that show? And is that something that you'd like to fight on a, a KSW type show with that big huge production? 
Yeah, mate, I was, I was seeing it. I was, I was actually seeing the show, but I was seeing the photos that you uh, you, you actually shared with the with all the crowd, and um, oh, phew, oh god, yeah, it looked, it looks, it looked, uh, it looked, it looked manic to me. Yeah, looking at that at the free arena, I can't wait to get in there. You know, it's going to be amazing. I mean, we're doing Genting, we're doing uh, Wembley free arena. <laughs> this is, I'm just, I'm just loving it. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's the first time, first time I've been on a plane since like two, the year 2000 when I went Disney World. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't wait to get on the plane and get over there. You know. The only thing about flying to Disney World is you don't have to worry about Mickey Mouse hitting you in the face and trying to take your arm off you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there is that. This, the stereotypical fighter uh, questions now. Do you? Do you have much much weight to cut? Uh, how, getting down to featherweight is it much of a cut for you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm a big uh, featherweight, should we say? But um, yeah, I mean, I've got a good team around me. Um, I'm, I'm working with some with new gears and Mr. Sport, you know. So we're um, we focus on the diet and we're we're uh, we'll be we, uh, we'll we'll make the weight not not a problem, yeah. And again, when when um when he actually coming over to Dublin, I know the show is on Friday, so weigh ins are Thursday. Is it Thursday morning you're flying in, or you're coming in a little earlier? Uh, I'm fl- I'm flying in on Wednesday. I'm flying in on Wednesday morning and coming uh, have a little look, have a look, have a look around Dublin and uh, yeah. And- Enjoy some of the stuff. Everyone keeps telling me to go and see the Guinness Museum, but I'm like, I can't even have a drink, so it might be after yeah. the fight. Wait laughter. <laughs> it's definitely wait laughter. As I always say, if you can't yeah. have a drink and you go to the Guinness store, it's like going to a prostitute for a hug. What's the point in that? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Uh, what we'll do, David, is we wish you the best of luck and the best of skill when you're over here, and we'll see you in person on the night as well. So definitely stop by and have a chat with us as well. Uh, we'll catch up in the flesh and have a chat with you. But we wish you the best of luck on the night, and thanks a million for taking the time to come on today and having a chat with us again. Cheers, thanks a lot. Um- Cheers, thanks a lot. I'm not going to mend real all my sponsors off because I've got way too many now. Yeah. Yeah. But um, thanks, thanks to all my sponsors and everyone for supporting me. Obviously, uh, thanks a lot. I love you too, guys. Thanks for having me on the show again. Yeah. Cheers, thanks, my man. man. Have, Have a good day. day. Take care. Cheers, thanks Cheers. a lot. Bye Cheers, bye. thanks a lot. Bye. bye. They are one half of one of the very intriguing matches taking place at uh, Bama 32 on November 10th. That's David Kalsa who takes on Dylan Took. Um, it's an interesting fight for a couple of reasons, Rob. Number one is uh, Calce only turned pro um, earlier. His debut was against SPG's King Cowley. Yeah. He got the victory. He then got a, a second uh, victory to go 2-0, and and he's now taken on Dylan Took, who has taken almost nearly a year off, just 11 months yeah. off um, after his, his uh, last defeat to Cameron Ells. So it's intriguing with the return of Dylan Took. I know a lot of people for a long time have been talking about the return of Dylan Took. Um, but you got to give it, David Carl said 2-0, oh, um, taking on a big fight in Dylan Took. Um, you know, a lot of guys uh, a lot of guys will get accused at the early professionals of padding careers and stuff like that. David Carl is not doing that. As you heard him, he wants to stay active. He wants the big fights. But uh, great talking with David. And sure, uh, why don't we just ring up his opponent? It makes sense, doesn't it? Dylan. The nuke. Took. So welcome back to obviously Fight Talk. And if you're watching on YouTube, you will recognize the face. And if you're listening on audio, you're about to find out. We are now joined making his long-awaited return on Bama 32 in Dublin Street Arena on the 10th of November. We are joined by Dylan the Nuke Took. So Dylan, thanks a million for coming back on to obviously Fight Talk. No problem, guys. Thank you for having me, as always. Uh, Dylan, you were one of our... I think you were like our second Second. guest. uh, Almost a year and a half ago now at this stage. A lot has changed since then. When we were speaking to you, it was about your debut coming up against Adam Caffrey. Um, You're now three and one. You've been... It was a bit of a hiatus of almost a year. It's been in and around 11 months now. Um, So as much as start the interview off in a bad term, we're going to go back to your last appearance. It was in the Bellator cage against Cameron Mm. Else. What has been going on in the last year, Dylan? What what, what has been Dylan Took been doing in this year? Um, <clears throat> getting life sorted, I suppose. Uh, becoming his own man as a, uh, I don't know, nothing really. Training, enjoying life, looking after my sisters, being with my family, training and proving. Uh, I just kind of wanted to take some time off, just kind of. I don't know. I, I had a lot of fights and a lot of, you know, very quick succession. You know, I probably shouldn't have fought Cameron or even Tobin for that matter uh, after the Ben Trey fight. But 
me being a ballsy little flat kid, I took the fight as always. Um, uh, it didn't go my way. I got caught early, you know. Shit happened. And then just kind of after it, I kind of I kind of felt like I wasn't giving it me all. I kind of felt like my mind was in other places, whether it was family or whether it was personal issues or living at home or just anything. I, I kind of needed to get myself in order and then I wanted to come back and fight again, you know what I mean? But I didn't want to be half in and half out. I wanted to be all in and that's the only way you can be, I suppose. Can you, pin, can you pinpoint exactly what the biggest change would be <clears> from <throat> then till now? Yeah, I have a I have a stable roof over my head, so <laughs> I know where I'm going to be living uh, day to day. I know where I have my stuff. Uh, I know where I have all my Xbox and my clothes. I know where me fo- I know who I'm living with. I know, you know, I'm more comfortable. I like what my man just said, I'm more comfortable. I'm I'm happier. I'm in control of my own shit now at the moment. You know what I mean? Were you jumping from place uh, to place I'm, before that, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I was see my nanny just got to a point where then um, we my little sisters were in the house and my mom was in the house and there wasn't enough room for me. Yeah. So I moved in with Ash and um, Ashy for a good while, and then uh, from Ashy I started to rent in my own little spots. I was renting them swords for a little bit, then I was renting Tala for a little bit, and then I finally uh, found the right place and I, I moved in with Luca and his. You, uh, his amazing fiance, and uh, I've been living there for the last like, four months, and it's just been kind of perfect to kind of have um, a control on things, kind of somewhere that was I could calm my in, if you get what I mean, you know. So uh, that was pretty much it. That was all that's really changed, to be honest. Nothing else has changed. Um, that's it, really. Um, <laughs> I'm still the same old. Dude. A, yeah. lot, a lot of people, you hear a lot of fighters say about um, their gym um, being family and stuff. Goes to show there is family yeah. living with training partners and, and you you're, you're mm-hmm. are one big family. Uh, Dylan, uh, on the night, um, I have to say, I was standing backstage as you were making your walkout and uh, the. Like, I'm even, I'm, I'm even getting it now. The hairs are standing yeah. up on my arms. Just the. The reception you got for such a young fighter coming out. Um, talk to us about that reception. Have you watched the tape back where you've even seen that or, or, or listened to what I should almost say? No, not really. I like. I remember. I kind of. I kind of. Uh, I kind of <clears throat> put that fight down to being almost grabbed into like this weird kind of whirlwind. Like it was weird. Like cause when I was in the cage, I could hear everyone uh, chanting. I could hear everyone singing. And that kind of, I couldn't have never heard that before. I could, I, I could, all, I had always blocked out. It was just like tunnel vision, and that was, uh, I could hear everything, and it was weird because I didn't get a walkout song, and it was just like it was like something out of the other It was really weird, um, but I just remember hearing everything, and I just kind of felt like I got sucked in. You know what I mean? My plan with Cameron was kind of just to move on him for the first two minutes or so, because uh, obviously he has that power. You know what I mean? He's finished a couple of guys early. But he doesn't like to fight, you know what I mean? Once I started to get a bit tough on him, he, he started to dwindle a little bit. So I was wait what I wanted to bring that out of him. I wanted to, you know, make him work a little bit and then take over then later into the round. I just got sucked in, it was a weird exchange. He pulled guard, I got back to my feet, disengaged, wanted to hit him, I just wanted to hit him. I just swung to hit him and I just got caught, you know what I mean? Just silly from my point of view. Uh, one of the things I, you know, I wasn't really thinking about at the time was just to relax and just calm down, like what I always do. You know what I mean? But uh, it was weird. It was so weird. It was so cool, though. You know, I, I get this reception because I'm not a little fake ass bitch. You know what I mean? I don't go around quoting Connor. I don't go around wearing Gucci. I wear Primark. <laughs> I wear Diodora runners. I wear Star Wars T-shirts. And even if I had a million quid in the bank, I'd still be wearing Star Wars. T-shirts and I'd still be wearing Diodora runners. Layla wants to get in. Hey, Layla. <laughs> Say hi, Layla. Hi. Hello. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> me and Layla, me and Layla went and done positional today, so we had a good session in already. Uh, we don't work in a bank. <laughs> I want a film with children. Hmm. I had to get her a suit. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much that was it. Uh, we kind of. I don't know, nothing, like, I just kind of got sucked into, like, this really weird, it was so weird, it was so cool, though, 
even after it, like after getting caught, or like I remember just smiling and looking up at the screen and just being like, "So this is all. This is what I was afraid of all those years. You know what I mean? This losing. You know what I mean? It's nothing to be afraid of. And after getting it, I feel, I feel rejuvenated. You know what I mean? In a way. Is that? <laughs> do you feel like it's? It's almost. You hear a lot of people when they first start training that when you get hit, you find out you're not made of glass. In a way, with the defeat. Do you feel like you've broke through the glass ceiling and the fear of that defeat or the thoughts of it has almost made you free? Yeah, I just I just don't give a fuck, like, to be honest. I, was, <laughs> I genuinely, whether I win, like, I, I used to have this saying when I was younger, um, win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter, as long as I have fun. Mm. Like, I will have fun. I, I always used to have that saying when I was younger. Uh, and that could have just been, you know, that kid mentality or something, but I always had that even into my pro debuts and stuff. I was like, I don't care, just as long as I have fun. Once I have fun, the result will take care of itself. Mm. So that was, and that was one of my earliest mentors, one of my first uh, people that really got me involved in the sport would say to me, you know what I mean? So I, I've kept that with me a lot, a long time, and uh, I'm still thinking about it. I still think about it in the gym, you know. Let's just have some fun. Like, let's not worry about winning. Let's not worry about losing. Let's just have fun. So, I, w- I would say that I'm kind of going back into that kind of mentality now. Uh, the sun rose the next day. It wasn't that big of a deal. Mm. It, I didn't even feel that bad. Like, because I just got caught. It was weird. Like, because I felt worse after the Ventre fight than I did after the Cameron fight. Mm. Um, or maybe because, you know, I got caught a couple of times in the yeah. first round and. That was just a messy brawl, like, you know, that was weird. That kind of dented my ego a little bit because I was just a striker getting caught, you know what I mean, or whatever the fuck, like, when... Whereas after the camera point, I, was, I literally walked out of the cage and I was just like, oh, I got caught. If you had brought him back out here now, I'd beat him, I know I would, so... That was a, that was a weird one, but... Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm, I'm happy, like, I don't really mind, you know what I mean? I don't dwell on it too much. So I'm fa- only 21. Fast mm-hmm. forward in the year then, Dylan. When did the decision come that now was the time to step back in there? Um, I got offered. Uh, I got offered. What's his name? That little fucking pussy of our field, but um, Reese Sutton is that his name? That yeah, little yeah, flick box yeah, yeah, yeah. I got offered him. I got offered him for the last Dublin card. Uh, the one where, which was, I don't even remember. But I got offered him for the last Dublin card that was happening, and uh, he taunted me down. He wouldn't fight me. He's a fucking bitch. Um. So I was going to come back, I was going to fight him, I was going to do him, um, he didn't want it. I don't know why he didn't want it, I don't know I don't know whether he was afraid of me or whether he just didn't want to fight in Dublin again, you know what I mean? So whatever his reason was, still a bitch. Um, and then uh, uh, pr- pretty much I just kind of, I don't even know how it happened, I, I kind of had in my mind to take a whole year off. I was going to take the whole year off, I was just going to relax and train and improve and just enjoy falling in love with the sport again and then kind of I don't know what happened just I don't know I just got I got a text but I kind of wanted to fight I was kind of eager to go again I was kind of in gym where you had that little narky head on me and I was throwing it a bit hard and then I was just kind of like I was like I want to fight again you know what I mean I was like I want to make the walk again I want to do it again I'm, I'm sick of this so I was like let's just go and do it like uh, and Luca was Luca's Luke has been a great friend to me and a great big brother to me for the last uh, ten or so months. He was, he was him, Chris Fields, and Ashlyn. Uh, Ashlyn, so she gives it out to me all the time. I pronounce her name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's Ashling, Dylan. Ashling. Okay, <laughs> um, I, I had a chat with the three of them, and they both just told me, "Why are you in such a rush? Like you're gonna get there eventually. Why not just take some time off? You don't seem like you want it." be in this situation at the moment and I was like I don't I really don't I want to sort out a lot of things and then get back into it so once they kind of told me and Luca kind of said to me Dylan I took two and a half years off before mm. and I came back and I was just like I was like yeah I was like I don't have to rush into anything I don't have to make any drastic decisions right now like let's just take some time I just came off two wars you know one yeah. was a flash KO and the other was just a fucking crazy an, an absolute fight. an absolute knock like you yeah. know what I mean just the first round just went out and swung with him and then went down to the second, put him asleep. But the first round was just crazy, you know. So I never, I don't like to make excuses because, man, I don't know what Ventre was going through on that day. I don't know what Cameron was going through on that day. They were probably both having bad days on that day and they probably, you know, they still worked. Mm. So I never make excuses because shit always happens. Mm. 
I've had so many camps where I've had shit happen and I never said that and so you know it is what it is but I'm looking forward to making the walk again <laughs> For the for basically your whole career since you're for your second amateur foot, you've been really really active. Does it feel different now after taking this time off, like just over a week or a little over a week now, going into this one? Do you feel different than the last couple of fights where you've been really really active? I feel better. Oh yeah, I've been sitting up. I I used to I used to have this thing where like, I'd never I'd never stop thinking about wait, I, like every single night when I'd be in bed or when I'd be um. I'd be up till about three, four in the morning thinking about the fight, looking in the mirror, shadow boxing, predicting shots. Somewhere along the line, that kind of stopped. I don't know what happened. Maybe I grew up, maybe I, I learned to like sleep a little bit more, you know what I mean? But I don't know, I just kind of, I got away from that. I stopped thinking about it as much. I don't know why. And now all I've been doing for the last six, seven weeks is thinking about mm. thinking about little things, visualizing about it. Imagining scrambles, imagining shots, imagining taking a shot, imagine stopping a takedown. So I've been acting the fight out of my head a lot more the, the way I used to. And I, I don't know, it just kind of feels, I don't know, it just, I don't know, I don't even, I can't even explain it. It just feels, it feels normal again. I feel I'm happy and I'm enjoying kind of imagining all these little different things and different scenarios and going back to what. I used to be you know what I mean because I firmly believe you're either all the way in on this or you're all the way up so the you name, cannot be half and half the name David Kalsa, um got put to you obviously he fought a teammate of yours in King Cowley and got the victory and um, he then had a split uh, decision victory as well in his second bout so have you watched any of David's fights and oh, yeah, um, like, what's your opinion on him yeah uh, he's not very good um, he, he knows he's not on my level he, he, there's no way he can go and look at my fights and then look at his fights and say that we're as good as each other like he doesn't even finish people <laughs> but my my big thing is uh, I seen his last fight I watched his last fight with Charlie Boy Howard whatever yeah. the fuck kind of name that is <laughs> uh, and it was a split decision lost for Charlie Boy I would have given the fight to Charlie Boy um, I don't know that could just be me being biased you know what I mean I, I'm fully aware that I'm not in David's best interest at the moment so um, but I think if you looked at that fight a lot of people would have thought that Charlie won you know how can you win a fight when you're limping around like a little bitch after getting the leg kicked off you know that's a big thing if that was on the street you lost you probably you probably got killed you know what I mean so I can only ever look in that mindset but um, he's I don't think he quite knows what he is he grappled Kane you know Kane's to me Kane was a toy boxer going into that fight anyway um, you know, he you can't you can't learn jujitsu in two years, and if he was even training four years, of course he's gonna have better jujitsu than Kane. So I think that's unfair on Kane with that one. Um, you know, it is what it is. He be Kane. He barely be someone who was dirt. Let's go. Now you're gonna see what's up. What are, we, what are we expecting to see at Dylan too? Because it's something I always say, uh, Dylan, when, when young fighters go away in the cage and you don't see them for a while, they come back and they've just evolved and progressed. So me personally, I was saying when, when I seen this fight announced, I said to you, I cannot wait for this yeah. comeback. Just because of what I've seen of you, I'm just going to, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, what's the next level, Dylan too? So what do we expect to see? Don't call it a comeback. I never left. <laughs> I never left. I just, I just took a little bit of time to just be normal for a little bit. Just have a little normal mind, guys. I'm crazy. Like I'm genuinely tapped in the head. Like there's, <laughs> I, I'm fucked. I, everyone that does this sport is a little bit fucked. Mm. I'm a little bit over that line again. But sometimes I just need time to relax and just time to get my mind straight. Uh, but it's it's the exact same thing that's always been there. Mm. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna have fun, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a beat down on this guy. I'm gonna have calculate destruction written all over. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the nuke, and I'm gonna have fun, and I'm just, I don't care. Like that's one of the things that a lot of people have been texting me and saying to me is, oh, I know you're not doing interviews. Even Noel said it to me. Yeah. I'm not not doing interviews. I've, I've no like I, I've no I'm not. It's not that I'm not doing them, it's not that I am doing them. I'm just kind of, I've done so many at this stage. It's kind of like, are you going to ask me the same question or are you going to, you know what I mean? Are you going to just prompt me, oh, why'd you take a year off? Ah, well, that's silly, this, that, and the other. Like, if 
if you're good at doing your job, I'll happily do an interview with you. But if you want me to come on and talk about Conor Mayweather, or if you want me to come on and talk about Conor Ferguson, or if someone wants me to do that, I'm not going to come on because I'm Dylan Chuk, you know what I mean? So I don't, it's not that I've been staying away from them, I've just been kind of going back to what it's all about, you know what I mean? I'm 3 and all, I'm 3 and 1 actually. It feels weird to say the one bit. Uh, I'm 3 and 1. Nobody gives a flying fuck about me. No matter what way you want to look at it, I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a UFC level yet. I'm not getting paid to do interviews. I'm not getting paid to do this and do that and do this and do that. You know what I mean? So what's it about? It's about getting, it's about getting the training in. It's about improving. It's about becoming better. And then it's about going out and winning fights. When it becomes to the stage of where I'm getting paid and where doing interviews is revolving around my paycheck, well then, yes, I will do them every single day of the week. But for now, what's the point? I had a session at half one. If it wasn't a bank holiday, the gym would be open all day. So I'd have another session. It's hard to fit them in, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I just, I think for some time I concentrated on the opposite. I was like, oh, I've got to get my name out there. I've got to get my face out there. And I was doing more interviews than probably I should have been doing when I wasn't concentrating on the training, you know what I mean? I was probably being a bit lazy. And then I'm like, oh, but I'm doing this aspect of it. So that's training itself. No, man, that's that's bullshit work, you know what I mean? I could sit in front of my phone on Snapchat and go live or on Facebook and go live. That's an interview, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, go train them. And then if you want to do an interview, do an interview, you know what I mean? So it just kind of wasn't getting caught up in them as, as much. And I've been more inclined to tell people no, but I like you guys, so I wouldn't say no. Love that. <laughs> uh, there's all, uh, with everything you said there, there's one thing I'm going to disagree with you on, Dylan, is you said people don't care about you or you're, you're a nobody. I have to disagree with that because I know anyone who supports or watches <laughs> Irish MMA knows exactly who you are and gets excited when they see your name on a card. But yeah. They're, they're different people. They're Irish fans. They are they are Irish fans. They are my home country people. Of course they love me. And as much as I love them. Because we show we show that love to each other. After shows I go straight out, I take pictures with the fans. The fans take pictures with me. I'm I'm happy with that. They I get messages all the time. You know what I mean? They're different. The Irish people they're gonna stop me when I'm walking down Grafton Street and they're gonna get a picture with me. Even though it means nothing. It's not like they're gonna get thousands and thousands of likes. It's cool to them, it means something to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So the Irish people care, but at the same time, when I got KO'd in 20 seconds, nobody cared. Very few people cared. Everyone was like, ah, look, that's him. He's done. That's what happens. That's all you have to do with the Dylan. You pressure him, you throw a left hook, he pulls, pulls, you catch him. He's a nobody. He's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Mm. So I had to deal with that after the last fight as well. Not yeah. that I gave a fuck, but still... They can care when they want to care, but when they don't want to care, they won't care either, you know what I mean? So it's kind of that yin and yang, you know what I mean? When you're up, you're up, but when you're down, you're down. So well, that's the that's like same with all fighters. Like Tyson had that exactly. when he was up as well. Yeah. You, your circle has to be tight, and you know when, through the bad times, the people who are around you in the bad time, and when, they, when you know, it's not all great news. When something bad happens, the people around you, they're the people you keep around you because they're the people who give a fuck about you. And fuck the rest of them is my thoughts yes. on it. But that was that was pretty much the kind of the attitude that I took from it, you know what I mean? No matter what, the same people were around me that were there before, you know what I mean? I had Ash, I had Luca, I had Chris, I had JK. I, I don't mention JK as much because he's always there, so I don't have to mention him, he's always there. He's in the gym from 9 to fucking 9 every night, he's there. So uh, I had a lot of good people around me. I had my mom, I had my nannies, I had my two little sisters. Fuck it. That year is behind me. It's been a good year. I'm a super solid purple belt. I could grade David Kelsey up the blue belt. So, you know, maybe I'll feel nice after the fight when I sub him or when I do whatever. Maybe I'll give him a blue belt just because, you know, I'm nice like that. <laughs> but I've just been having fun this year. And it's good to come back and kind of still have people telling me that I'm relevant. <laughs> so that's good to hear. And I can't wait. I can't wait for next week. You know I mean? I can't wait to weigh in. I can't wait to, you know, do all the the fighting stuff you know all this obligations next week of yeah. interviews and stuff I'm really looking forward to coming back it's going to be fun uh, I can't wait to make the walk I can't wait to hear my music uh, I don't I don't quite know what song I'll have out yet but I can't wait to hear it but I'm just I'm just looking forward I'm happy as you can tell I'm happy yeah, I'm in good form that, yeah. I have cool nudie throwing hats so <laughs> I can't complain <laughs> Speak, speaking of a, a good year it must have been a good couple of weeks for yourself because I know a guy who you're you, you mentioned him Chris Fields had a big win at KSW yeah. that must be a good morale yeah. boost getting into the, the cage now in a couple of weeks yeah it's a really big morale boost and the one big thing was Chris has been out for 18 months yeah, yeah. 
Ring Ross doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that you do every single week in the gym. If I spar on a Friday, that Friday spar is going to look identical to the Friday fight. You know what I mean? Mm. I think I kind of got away from that a little bit as well. I kind of was putting a little bit too much pressure on myself to kind of, oh, this is different. You know what I mean? This is, oh, I haven't done this in ages. You know what I mean? Like, it's the exact same thing. Uh, well, as Carl Tanswell would always say, uh, uh, there's nothing left to do but to do it. It's mm. just another day at the office. You know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, I think I kind of got that. And looking at Chris's performance, you go out and he looks better than he's ever looked. Yeah, Chris looks great. Like, he's hell, great, like, yeah. Okay. You're out for 18 months. You're hitting Kimura rolls. Yeah. You're hitting mounted triangles. Yeah. You're hitting iron bars from bottom. Like, who is this man? I've never <laughs> seen this man before. Like, so looking at Chris and looking at Chrissy and like Chrissy literally is like my big my big brother. Yeah. Uh, him and Luca, they give out to me. They tell me when I'm wrong. They tell me when I'm right. And looking at uh, now, I get to look at you know I get to look at Luca. I get to go over and corner Luca in Slovenia for his mm-hmm. title fight. That was a big uplifter. Just even to see how he handles himself coming up to the fight the whole week, literally all Luca would say to himself is, "It's the same thing. It's another day. It's another day. It's another day. Then it's another day." And like literally, I was just like, "Yeah, it's another day. This is nothing different." And this is stuff that I would have always taught myself, but I, I don't know. Maybe I just got caught up in this whole fame shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Having a documentary and all done about you, kind of. Oh, I'm so cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, no, I was really happy with Chris, really happy. And it was uplifting to look at him. I don't know, I, I, I'm looking forward to having my hand raised and then for Chris to go, ah, that was so uplifting. And then I'll be like, yeah. And then we'll go and get some food, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm really giddy at the moment. I'm just kind of like, ah, oh, I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> and just just one month enough. then and then the new Star Wars film is released, so yeah. does that as well? I know, even better. Yeah. My big thing was, if I had been fighting in December and the Star Wars film had it come out, I would have snapped. <laughs> <laughs> because I wouldn't have been able to eat so yeah, popcorn, uh, now that it's now that it's out and I'm able to eat I'm a happy boy <laughs> so I'll have to I'll have to go see it I'll have to go see it with popcorn and I'll have to I, Layla doesn't like Star Wars so I will she won't get, come see it with you get her into her show her the, get, get her the, the Vader moment uh, mm. that gets every kid it's yeah. amazing uh, yeah I, everyone loves a bit of Vader <laughs> um, I, I think I think Bama need to rename it Bama 32 the reawakening uh, it's the reawakening it's it's what the Irish fans have wanted to see is the reborn Dylan too. Dylan thanks a million for taking the time to come on and chat with us today and honestly God man I am so excited to watch your fight and make that walk again yes. uh, so we wish you the best of luck and we'll talk to you on the night as well but um, thank you guys best of luck my man and thanks for taking the time pleasure thank you for, thank you for having me on and I'll be sure to see us at the event and if you haven't got your tickets get them now thank you to the Tron Royalty for always sponsoring me and looking after me Lindsay Doyle and Mark Kaminsky, uh, two of the best strength and conditioning and nutritionist coaches out there. Thank you so much. Excellent. And to SPG. <laughs> You're Cheers a superstar. Man. Well done. Dylan, too, Glazer. Have a good one. Cheers, man. That looks like a young man who is just absolutely ready to go. Loves, and loves, loves the game. Yeah. yeah. You can tell he absolutely loves the game. He's, yeah. he's uh, reinvigorated, it seems. That's what it seems to me. Um, excellent fight. Yeah. What a great yeah, fight. Wait, Can't wait, wait for it. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, Bama, the, the Bellator portion of the card, if we're going to be honest, it's it's definitely not even close to Bama's what, winning. Let's what Bama, that, what yeah. Bama have put Bama, on. Bama Bama's on, card yeah. is yeah. insanely good. Like all the, Every single fight in that Bama card is pretty much a, a fight I want to see. So should be good. Yeah. Should be um, good. But Greg Talton, it's been mad in a year and a half since he, his first appearance with us. But, yeah, uh, second, second guest. Yeah, yeah brilliant stuff. Uh, Dylan Took. So welcome along to obviously Fight Talk and this is Must Watch MMA Fights for November 2017. This is our second edition and we thought why not get Brendan Dorman involved. Sure he's doing nothing else so let's get him on the phone and we have done. So Brendan is in the dark. we got to point this out as well. Brendan is in the dark. He does not know our list. This list was put together by myself and Robert. There's a rule to this list. Only two fights from one card are permitted to make the list. Otherwise, let's be honest, it would have been... Yeah, just watch uh, yeah, the UFC yeah. pay-per-view on 217. Uh, but, Brendan, you're in the dark, so you just, as you said, give to Caesar if you agree and any opinions on the fight. So, example, number five in the must-watch fights for November 2017 is Anderson Silva versus Calvin Gastelum. Robert, 
Why? For me, I think I think Anderson Silva, whenever he fights, is must watch TV. He's one of the greatest fighters of all time. So I think we need to cherish any Anderson Silva fight. And maybe he's past it. Maybe he is. But I think we need to cherish any Anderson Silva fight when we have him. Because when he goes away, we're going to miss him. With Kelvin Gastelum, I think he's a really, really good prospect. I think he probably goes into this one as favour, which is you know maybe surprising to a few people. But he's a young guy um, fighting at middleweight now. And I actually like him at middleweight. And there's Brendan Norman gone. Brennan, what happened? Brendan just thought I'm having enough of this. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> he's like, fuck that. Hey, what the fuck happened? I don't know. You, you don't really like this fight, do you? <laughs> You're like, damn, number five, Gaston yeah, Silva, I'm out of here. I literally called back within 10 seconds. I could hear you, I, and then it just went blank. Wait. Anderson Silva's must see TV, Kelvin Gaston. Continue. Sorry. Fuck. Yeah, Kelvin Gaston is a good prospect, and um, I think it's a very competitive fight. I think uh, Kelvin will go in as the favorite. Um, I think it could be a difficult fight for Anderson at his age, but I think it's a, it's a good one. I think the reason why this would sit at number five, as you said, Rob, Anderson Silva would be considered by many as a Hall of Famer, one of the Top best, tree of best all to time, ever do ever. it. Uh, Anderson is actually coming out in off the back of a victory over Derek Brunson, who had a pretty impressive victory at the weekend. Close fight. Um, and Gastelum is coming off a defeat to Chris Weidman. So, in a way, this is you know a legend taking on a young lion, if you like. So, you know, this gives Gastelum the opportunity if he beats Anderson Silva. All of a sudden, it's it, you know. Not to disrespect anybody else in the division, but if you beat Anderson Silva, it's going to get noticed. Yeah. So it's a big opportunity for uh, Gastelum here. That's why it sits at number five for me. Brendan, do you agree or disagree with number five? Obviously, you list? haven't heard the rest of the list, but is good it, fight. Is yeah, it? I mean, I don't know about the other ones on the list, but as far as it being a great fight, yeah, absolutely. It may be, we may be getting close to Anderson Swan song, you know? Yeah. And uh, Gastelum is a really interesting kind of styles make fights match up with him. Because he's, he's pretty granite chinned, you know. Um, I, I don't know if he'll try to use wrestling. You know, it's a, it's stylistically, it's interesting, you know. Um, Weidman looked amazing against Gaslam, but up until that point, he, he was looking pretty amazing against everyone else. So we saw what he did to Uriah Hall, who was kind of Anderson-ish, I guess. I mean, I, I'm giving him too much credit, maybe, definitely. But, uh, yeah, good fight, for sure. Um, so that's number five in the list. Moving along swiftly. Number four, we move to Bellator. Um, this is Ryan Bader defending his strap against Linton Vassell. This takes place on the 3rd of November at Bellator 187. I think it's got to get in there. I'll speak up on it because from Bellator's point of view, this is their title. It's a title belt. It's in yeah. the month of November. It makes perfect sense to make it. Bader coming across from the UFC, winning the title. Linton Vassell is a veteran now in the Bellator cage. Ernest earned his title shot after a dominant display against Liam McGarry to get it. Uh, let's be honest, Linton's been on the show a couple of times. We want to see Linton do well. Uh, but this, again, it's a high-caliber uh, title shot and it definitely warranted to make the top five, but is four to the right spot? Yeah, I, me and Noel, we were kind of thinking, is this four or is this five? The, the Anderson and the, the Bader fight kind of were interchanging for a while. But I think for this one, I think the significance mm-hmm. of it, it's a title yeah. fight. Ryan Bader making that big move over to Bellator. His first fight was a bit of a dud. I think everyone can say that. Um, but I think this is an interesting fight because Linton Vassell, for a guy from the UK, has uh, very good wrestling. So I think we're going to see a different Ryan Bader in this one. I don't, see we're gonna, don't think we're going to see a whole lot of wrestling. I think it's going to be a striking match. Um, and again, it's a title fight oh. in Bellator. Bellator are doing some big things. So it's an interesting one. Yeah, um... I don't have a dog in the race. I mean, a friend of the show is a friend of mine, of course. Um, uh, yeah, Bader has been in some great fights, and he's been in some real stinkers, and he's been slaughtered. Those are like, that's his resume, right? He was rising up, and he was doing really well up until Rumble just was that massive roadblock. Interesting fight. Another stylistic kind of interest. You know, like, as you guys said, usually as Americans, we think as people from the UK as not having much wrestling, but he's got good grappling. Yeah. So it might nullify some of the, the uh, boringness of um, Bader potentially, right? How do you feel at but the yeah, moment? Fight. How do you feel at the moment with five being Anderson, Gasolum and four Bader Vassell? I mean, I'm more, I'm more personally interested in Anderson versus, sure. uh, cool. I get the title fight thing, but Gasolum Anderson's a more interesting fight for me. You know. well, this is this is why we exactly. do people is, will talk yeah. about it. Number three, let's move to number three. We are going to UFC Fight Night 120, taking place on the 11th 
of November. And this sees Dustin Poirier taking on Showtime, Anthony Pettis. I think Brendan will like this one. Number three, Brendan, you're nodding happily. You agree with that? You're looking forward to this fight. <laughs> really? Of course I'm biased <laughs> as shit here. Yeah. By the way, I, yeah, I talked to a friend that wants to come on the show on the phone. Speaking of... Uh, a different thing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Anthony Pettis uh, is, um, yeah, that's my fam. Yeah. So, yeah, that's an awesome fight, man. That's an incredible fight. Poirier, Poirier is looking to come back, right, from that kind of awkward fight with Alvarez. Yeah, yeah. And Pettis is coming off an amazing win over Miller. Um, Dustin tends to stand, uh, stand southpaw, and Pettis fights really well against southpaws normally. Nice. Unless their art, name's nice. RDA. Great fight. Unbelievable fight. Yeah, this one, yeah. For, I think for this one, it's significant um, because both guys, I think mm-hmm. for a lot, for a long time, in his, maybe his last two or three fights, people are saying maybe Pettis isn't there. But after that huge win, I think Pettis is back, especially at 155. I don't think he looked great at 145. Mm-hmm. He spoke about that being a difficult cut. Mm-hmm. So I think it's significant because Pettis is back at 55. Maybe he can make a run again. Poirier has always been kind of there. He just hasn't really broke into that top two tree, um, but he can get there. <sighs> Um, and then I just think for style-wise and for how entertaining the fight could be, it has to be on the list. 100%. Number three here, I think this is only number three because what's number two and number one? Yeah. Um, that sounds quite okay. obvious. But <laughs> I, I think uh, like Dustin Poirier, since he moved to 155, <laughs> just looks a lot better. That really caught yeah. you. Uh, I think Poirier just at 55 looks great. He looks. Yeah. It's almost like the way Cowboy looks, looked better at 170, but that's been railroaded a little bit recently. But I just, oh, I yeah, I just think that Poirier looks the better fighter here at 55 as he than he did at 45. Yeah, um, and this just, this striking just uh, it's it's a really 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 interesting fight. Like Showtime's striking is phenomenal. So is Pettis. So I'm interested. And you know the whole Connor point to Pettis saying you know if a strong breeze blows it will rock Pettis. Uh, or sorry, um, Poirier. Oh, it, it's yeah, that's true. You know, it, it, it's interesting because the fight you said that he, he came off with Eddie Alvarez, that was just building to be a fantastic yeah. fight. And the fans, we almost got robbed. Oh. But how they didn't rerun that one back is beyond me. Eddie Alvarez obviously went into the tough house. But, uh, yeah, Anthony Pettis against uh, Dustin Poirier. I think this is a potential. You could see a highlight reel knockout or you could just see pure technique versus technique. And I think it is a beautiful fight. The next one's going to be interesting, I think. Yes. I think the for next me, one's going to be interesting. For me to hear? Yes. For So, okay. here we go. Number two, UFC 217 Madison Square Garden taking place on the 4th of November. Michael Bisbing versus George St. Pierre. Number two, Brendan. I'm, I'm fucking curious what one is. Um... Uh, I think I know what one might be. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of interested in that fight. <laughs> Would you say well, you have a dog some, in that race? <laughs> I, I, I have some weird concerns. I'm sure we'll get there, but yeah. yeah fucking yeah. amazing fight. A, a lot of people aren't into it, whatever, you know. I think it's the like the new generation of fans, but yeah. yeah sure. Incredible fight. Kidding me? Like the guy that reigned for 10 years in the toughest division in the sport for 10 years, yeah. coming back to try to actually kind of deserves that shot in a, in a different way uh, against the, the biggest shit talker in the game right now who's been so good since you saw this come in yeah awesome awesome fight we haven't uh, done our history pre- yeah history we haven't done our preview for the show just yet but i think it's important to note that who george st pierre was i'm not sure the ufc are doing who? a i'm not sure the ufc are doing a, a great job of Ugh. reminding people or at least telling the newer fans how good gsp was or what he meant to the sport um, and then I think you also have to take uh-huh. into account if he does beat Michael Bisping, how big of an accomplishment that is. Or if Michael Bisping beats GSP, how big of an accomplishment that is. I just think for the return of George St. Pierre alone, this definitely should be near the top of the list. We have reasons why it's not number one, and we'll get to that. But uh-huh. it's an absolutely amazing fight. It's intriguing. We don't know what's going to happen. What's George going to look like at middleweight? You know, coming back after four years, it's crazy. Um, Michael Bisping, he's, he's had such a great run. What a fight. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm saying this right. George Saint Perrier, Perry Perrier. I'm not too sure who this guy is. George, I'm new to MMA. No, look, George, you are all right. The uh, what you said, Rob, makes perfect sense. I think the UFC have fallen down on the promotion of the fight. They're just almost using presumption yeah. that the fans that watch the UFC now 
watch the UFC when George was dominant. Um, that doesn't seem to be mm-hmm. the case. I was reading an article during the week. I apologize because I can't remember who wrote the article or where I was reading it. But it was saying the so-called sense. casual fans of MMA that were the casual fans when George St. Pierre was the big draw don't watch MMA anymore. Yeah. So they've drifted away so they don't have them casual fans anymore. So the now new mm-hmm. casual fans don't know who George yeah. St. Pierre is. That happens. Michael Bisbing, um, you know, you'd literally watch Michael Bisbing uh, let's say, for example, like choke a kid out in his gym and get sued for it. You pay money for that shit, you know what I mean? But like Biz Bing is the absolute. Uh, he's raining. And I don't know how people aren't excited for this fight. This is incredible. The reason, the reason, the reason why I have this number two, and it was almost the reason Rob why I didn't have it in the top five. Imagine that, Brandon. I this put mad. forward this a, crazy an argument to not have this in the top five, and the reason being is because in one year's time, one year, one year is very short. I don't think either of these fighters are active. And that's why I just think there's other fights like we can't say yet because we haven't given away <laughs> number one. We'll come back to it when we give away number one. But there's other fights that I think to the future of MMA are more important. And that was my argument why Bisping St. Pierre shouldn't be on the list. What's your immediate reaction to that, Brendan? Leg kicks. <laughs> No said. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, it was all fair that uh, Brennan was said he'd let kick the shit out of me because he found out I was six foot four and I said he wouldn't touch me. Um, <laughs> it's easily said over Skype call, folks. Um, right, so Bisbing, St. Pierre, uh-huh. number two. Are you disappointed as number two? Um, I don't know what one is yet. Okay, let's not let you wait any longer. Number one, UFC. 217, Madison Square Garden, 4th yeah, of November, know. same thing, number one, Cody Garbrandt Co-main. versus TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, good call. Yeah, that's what I meant by co yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what's your opinion? I, I get it. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to that just as much. Yeah. I get it. Should I mean, if on. not, you know, it's yeah, that they're right there. there. So we're talking about two guys in their in their prime, yeah. looking like two of the best one thirty fivers ever. Yeah, that have a backstory. I mean, that that fight sells itself on skill, on backstory, drama, stylistically. That's a that's that's as good as it gets yeah. for a matchup. Yeah, pretty, that's amazing. Pre, that's pretty amazing. much why amazing. we put it. That's pretty much why you put it at number one. It's an amazing fight between the two amazing fighters who are at the top of their game. Pretty much, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely, there's a story behind it as well, which you know, a lot yeah. of the time you're not really uh, one to get into the stories, but at least for this one, it's it's a genuine, it's a genuine thing where yeah. you know you understand why both guys are upset about it, and you understand why does a does a story mm-hmm. going into it. So that's good as well. And again, Cody Garbrandt coming off one of the best performances you'll ever see against uh, Dominic Cruz. Oh, um, amazing. Yeah, and TJ Dillashaw coming back after a very close fight with Dominic, Dominic Cruz. So the winner of this fight could realistically call themselves the best bantamweight of all time, realistically. Yeah. so and That's why it makes number one. So the list again, number five, Anderson Silva taking on Kelvin Gastelum. That's on the 25th of November. Number four is Ryan Bader, Linton Vassell, the 3rd of November. What a weekend of fights coming up. Um, number three is Dustin Poirier, Anthony Pettis, the 11th of November. Number two, Bisbing St. Pierre. UFC 217 coming up this weekend. And number one, Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw. Obviously, there was rules employed in this. If we didn't have the rules, we literally would have said, look at the main card of UFC. Yeah, because Joanna, Joanna JJ against Rose, Rose is, an amazing amazing fight. is an incredible fight. And that would have been, just as a matter of interest to anybody, that would have been the one that would have got bumped, Biz being Pierre, for me. If we didn't get that on, if Rob fought hard for it, if that didn't get on, we would have had Joanna there. Yeah, yeah, and, of course, Brendan shown his colors there with uh, Joanna T-shirt. But these are the must-watch MMA fights of November 2017. If you agree, hit like. If you disagree, comment. Don't uh, don't down like. Who down likes a YouTube video? But, yeah, check them out. Must-watch MMA fights for November. <laughs> this was obviously Fight Talks Breakdown, but with Noel O'Keefe, Robert Pallon, Brendan Dorman. 
So there we are, the must-watch fights in November. Agree, disagree, comment below. Brendan Dorman on. He sort of agreed and disagreed, Robert yeah. Sonum. Um, I think it's he a hard list to make. I think he would have replaced the Bader uh, Vassell fight with Anderson, possibly. Uh, but yeah, big shout as always to Brendan Dorman for joining us to do that. This has been, obviously, Fight Talk. I'm going to wrap it up. We still have one thing to do, but a big shout-out before we do it to our sponsors, MMAMix.com. They're obviously good because they're wit. Obviously, Fight Talk to Fight Star Ireland, the Fighter's Choice, everything you need under two roofs. And, of course, to www.feelsupreme.co.uk. Check them out and use the fight code at the end, the checkout code, Fight Talk. You get 10% off. We are now going to do the draw for our competition we had was Sign. win a Supreme Athlete Package. It was CBD oil, Chiroceps, and Radiola. Yeah, um, and then there's a runner-up prize as well of a nutritional test. I'm doing it on justice because I can't pronounce the words, but yeah. these are something that somebody who trains would absolutely love. It, it aids your recovery, and you know, I mean, feel supreme, do great stuff. So we're going yeah. old school with this one. We have a draw. It's supposed to be a hat. All the names it's are the, it's in. A, it's a camera uh, in, holder. In the camera holder. So yeah. we're going to give it a good shake. And there's two prizes, and Robert is going to draw. Yeah, do, I look, do I look away? Or, okay, do I look away? Okay. And we have a winner. So this is the winner of the CBD oil, Cordyceps and Radola. Farrell Connolly. Farrell Connolly, a good listener to the show. Excellent stuff. Farrell Probably can't Connolly. see that, but it's Farrell Connolly. You can see it. Evidence. Excellent stuff. And we do have a runner's up prize, which, which is, is the nutritional test. So dig deep. <laughs> All right. Go for this one. Um, what the fuck? Aaron, is look. What's that say? I think you wrote that. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. You have won yourself the nutritional test. So what we will do is we will message both guys. So don't throw them away because we will <laughs> yeah. lose them. So right. Uh, that was not Judge. First prize and second prize. So yeah, big thank you to feelsupreme.co.uk and congratulations to Farrell Conley who's won the athlete pack and Aaron Judge who got the nutritional test. Thanks a million everybody for liking and sharing. And while you're there, why not go on to feelsupreme.com uh, to .co.uk, not .com. <laughs> feelsupreme.co.uk. Have a look at their products. Buy something and use at the checkout. Fight Talk, you'll get 10% off it. This has been obviously Fight Talk 87. If you've listened to this point, go and check out our breakdown. We went deep with Brendan Dorman for UFC uh, 217. Go and check that out. I've been Nolo O'Keefe. You've been Robert Pallon. You've been you. Will you be impressed with his performance? <laughs>